Regional Ministers Conference. We have appreciated and enjoyed the fellowship of all the ministers from all the various churches and denominations. And it's wonderful that we can enjoy the spirit of unity, love, and fellowship, even though we're from different churches. And it's wonderful that we realize that it's the blood of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice that has joined us together. And there is nothing stronger than that that can pull us apart. And we believe that the principles we have shared together at this time will make the church of Jesus Christ to grow. And as we're all going back to our various churches, the same God that has helped a number of us will, rest, will help everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to the end of the program, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll share some brief exhortation together from the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you because we come to this point in time in a sharing together. Thank you for all that you have done for us, how you have used ministers like ourselves from different churches to encourage us, to pray with us, to exhort us, to lead us on, and to tell us that the work that you have given us to do will prosper. And nothing will be able to destroy what you have already started with us. Lord, we thank you for all the encouragement, all the fellowship, all the sharing together. Father, we pray that as we share together again now, that you will bless us richly. And that this work you've given us to do will never turn our backs on it. But this work will progress. And will go from one level of success to higher levels of success. Use us more than ever before. Lord, not only in our churches, we pray that you will use us for other ministers that are not here too. That we, without any attitude of selfishness, will be able to share these same principles with other ministers. So that their churches too will grow. So that they will glorify you more. Edify the body of Christ more and have more satisfaction that they are pleasing you more than ever before. Be with us, O Lord. Again, we pray that you'll bless us and make us channels of blessings for other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we leave, we need to share together on onward Christian preachers. Many times we ourselves have encouraged Christians and we have told them onward Christian soldiers marching as to battle. And we have encouraged those believers and members in our churches to march on, to move on, never to look back because we are going to win at the end of the day. But we who are preachers we need to tell ourselves that if there is any tool in the hands of the devil with which to bring down any minister of the gospel, it's that single tool of discouragement. That sometimes we become discouraged and probably we might feel strange why am I so discouraged? But I want to tell you, discouragement is a common thing that the devil uses at different times to get us down. He makes us to look at things that are negative and we feel that we have failed and we cannot do this thing. In fact, why should God have even chosen us to start with and we become very sure and certain that we'll never be able to succeed. Therefore, in discouragement, we want to turn back. We've seen so many failures. And we've seen so many reasons why we shouldn't be doing this work. And the devil 
will blow on that thing and exaggerate that thing and say, yes, you'll never make it, therefore go back. But it's not a strange thing if it happens to you. It has happened to great men of God before us. In fact, Moses came to a time he became so discouraged and he felt he would not be able to go on. He's given his life, consecrated his life, that he will work for the Lord and he will deliver the children of Israel out of captivity. He had got started. And they were now in the wilderness. Just about the time they were to get into the land of Canaan, he chose 12 people and said, go and see the land. And bring back testimony that what I have told all these people, it is true. And then they went. They came back. And he said, it's true what Moses, our leader, has told us. But he didn't tell us the rest of the story. He said, the land is flowing with milk and honey. He is right. He said, that land is fertile. He is right. But what he didn't tell us, which is the most important thing he should have told us, is that there are giants in the land. If we get in there, one day is enough. Those giants will just tread upon us like grass uppers, and we're not going to go in. If he wants to go in, let him go alone. Maybe he'll have two people that will go along with him. As for us, we're staying here. Our wives, our children, they're going to die if we follow Moses. And the people began to cry. And Moses felt, what is all this? And Caleb said, no, we're able. They said, shut up. What do you know? Joshua said, but we can do it. How do you know? You want to die? You are ready to die? Okay, those who want to die, follow him. And the people began to weep. And they said they were going to choose captain. So that they'll go back to Egypt. Discouragement had come. Well, it came to a time that Moses himself look at Numbers chapter 11 from verse 11. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all these people upon me? Have I conceived all these people have I begotten them, that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nothing father beareth the sucking child, unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all these people? That was the time they were crying for meat. For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou de deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of thy hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wretchedness. That man was discouraged. You think you are the only one that has ever felt discouraged. That you felt it's even better to die now. I don't think I can continue preaching. I don't think I can continue leading these people. No matter how much you do, they always discover how much you have not done. No matter what good things you have done for them, they always emphasize how many bad things you have done. And no matter how many sacrifices you have made, they are always emphasizing what you have not sacrificed. That they say, I think it will be better for me if I leave this world. I don't think I can continue. The church people, they are against me. Pharaoh is still against me. The Egyptians are still against me. The people in Canaan, they are getting ready. And my name is being broadcast, scattered all about. And I say, that Moses, if he comes to this place, will tear him apart. In Egypt, no good name. In Canaan, where we're going, no good name. 
among our own people themselves, no good name. God, there's nowhere I will live. I cannot go back to live in Egypt. They kill me. I cannot go ahead to Canaan without these people. There is no security. Even in the wilderness with these people, look at them. Therefore, God, don't let me see my wretchedness. Kill me yourself. If you hear that a minister said he had a tendency for suicide, wanting to die, what will you say? Oh, he's backsliding. Don't talk like that. Don't be too quick to condemn. Look at Moses. He was fed up. And he said, God, I don't want to kill myself, but you do it for me and kill me. But God knew his problem. And he knew it is a common problem. And it is a problem of discouragement. He saw the enemy. He didn't see the friend. What will you do if you didn't see any friend? And all you saw is an enemy. He saw the need. He didn't see solution. What will you do if all you saw was the need without seeing a solution? He saw the angry people. He did not see anybody that will even show love and say, Moses, you have even tried for us. They all condemned him. What will you do? If everybody condemned and criticized you, and they said that uh, your preaching, not effective. Evangelism, not effective. Since you came to our church, we don't see anything that you have done. All we know is that money, money, money every time. You collect the money. The church is not built. Tracks are not printed. Souls are not saved. Since you came. I can't say anything I've gained though. Now, remember, have you gained anything since pastor came? How about you? Have you gained any? Ah, we're just looking at him that he should be preaching. And you hear all that. And one day, you have 12 elders. And you have told the 12 elders that we're able to go up and take the country. Though the giants, they be on our way. We shall take the country. And after the chorus, somebody raises up his hand. Excuse me, please. Say, yes, my brother. We're able. Amen. And he says, that's not what I want to say, Pastor. Pastor, we are fed up with all that deceit. Stop deceiving us. We are not able. And out of those 12 elders, nine people rise up. They say, we are behind you. Talk. We don't want any pastor to deceive us. We are not able. This place where we are, they are burning us alive. They are destroying us. We are afraid. Let's tell you the fact. We are not able. We are not doing anything. And the rest of the church, they all stand up. They say, good talk. We are not able. We are not following pastor. And only two people among the elders are supporting you. Those two people, one of the ten people, dragged him, brought him outside, and said, stone him. And you became afraid. You run out of the church and forget your Bible. <laughs> That's what happened to Moses. They complained. If you ever met people that never said thank you, in all their lives of 40 years, if you ever met them, come and tell me. I met them in the wilderness. They are the people that followed Moses. There was no thank you in their mouth. Never say, they never said thank you. All that Moses did, all that Moses sacrificed, he left Egypt. They could have made him king. But he forsook all that. And they never said thank you to this man. It's only after he died, they began to mourn. It's after we die, they begin to see that. Pastor was good though. <laughs> after we have died, I've been buried. All the money they couldn't give us at the time we were working in the church, then they begin to spend for a funeral. They want to eat after we have died. That's why he was discouraged. But the point is, my brother, the next time you get discouraged, remember, Moses too was discouraged. Don't feel you are strange. Anybody can get discouraged. Anybody. 
when all the people are not cooperating, when they are all criticizing, when after we have done our best, they feel we have not done anything. When we have sacrificed and consecrated and yielded our whole life, they talk as if we are the greatest sinners in the whole world. And even think of stoning us. Think about it. And if Moses could get discouraged, you can get discouraged. But by the grace of God, I will show you how to handle discouragement. Because Moses handled it. He wanted to die. You know, when he talked to God and said, God, kill me. You know what that is? That's prayer. When somebody kneels down or he stands up and then he looks up to God and says, God, why have you called me to this place? When you are talking to God, you are praying. This man was praying and said, God, where have you, why have you afflicted me like this? What have I done? I thought you had forgiven all the sins I committed before and then you brought me into this situation. All right, now let's settle everything. I'm asking for only one request and it is this. Do it for me. Please, kill me. And God didn't answer the prayer. Those prayers you pray when you are discouraged, thank God he doesn't answer them. <laughs> when you are discouraged and you say, Lord, I thought I was a pastor, but I changed my mind, I'm no more a pastor. I, saw, I thought I saw a vision. I've changed my mind. I don't see any vision again. <laughs> I thought that I will work for you until I die. Lord, I am sorry, but I'm changing my mind. And now let's have an agreement. I will not do this again. I will not do this again. I'm packing my load. I'll become a businessman, prosper my business. Oh God, then I will give the money to anybody who can bear the discouragement and will continue the work. I'll be contributing for the work of the Lord. All the prayers you pray at the time of discouragement, thank God he never answers them. Never. You tell him to kill you. That's the time you become strong. You tell him, oh Lord, that I don't want to do anything now. That's the time that doors will be opening. They invite you to come and preach here. When, have you noticed that when you say, I will not preach anymore. It is then invitations will be coming. And they will say, we need you here. We need you here. We need you there. Why? Because God is showing you, I didn't answer your prayer when you were discouraged. And it's then that some friends that you never saw before, that you'll be saying, Pastor, before they call you brother, when you were still wanting to do the work. Now that you say that, I don't even want to be a pastor anymore. Somebody will come and say, Pastor, how are you? Evangelist, how are you? You say, what is all this? It's when I decided I'm not going to do it again that they are calling me pastor. God didn't answer the prayers you prayed when you were discouraged. God is wonderful. Amen. Don't be discouraged. The field is before us. We're going to do this work. You know, when we get to heaven, we'll see this man Moses. And I will see him. And I'm going to ask him questions. And I will say, Moses... That prayer you prayed. I preached about you. And I told my colleagues, fellow pastors, that God didn't answer your prayer. You prayed at a time of discouragement. Then I would say, Moses, let's talk. Because there will be a long, long time to talk in heaven. Amen. I would say, Moses, now tell me. How do you enjoy where you are now? The reward you have got. The reward, of, the reward of what you did after that prayer. All the things you did after Numbers chapter 11. That God didn't kill you. Look at your crown. Look at your stars. Look at all that you are enjoying now. Suppose God had answered your prayer and killed you. In Numbers chapter 11. Will you be wearing this crown? And Moses will shake his head and, you say, and will say, You know, when we are in the world, we don't know how foolish we are. But now that I've got to heaven, I know I should never have prayed that prayer. When you get to heaven, there will be some prayers you'll discover you should never have prayed. Some tears you are shedding now, you should never have shed. But 
will laugh about it when we get to heaven. Because it will all be over. The body, the heat, the problem, everything will be over. And then when we have got the reward, we'll thank the Lord. He didn't answer the prayers we prayed at the time we were discouraged. Look at another man. I wonder why these great men of God in the Bible, why they felt so discouraged. Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Elijah. You know, if I met Gehazi on the way, and I said, Gehazi, what are you doing there? And he says, I'm fed up. I want to die. I said, there you are. You are not consecrated. That's what we're telling you. When you get sanctified and consecrated, you'll not be sitting down there saying that you want to die. If I met Gehazi on the way and say, I want to die, I know it's because he's having a problem. If I met Judas Iscariot and said, Judas Iscariot, what are you doing there? And he says, I want to die. I said, there you are. That's what we're telling you. Get sanctified and get consecrated. But I'm afraid when I met Elijah, I cannot accuse Elijah of not being consecrated. A man that went to the side of the river one year and just stayed there, a man of faith. And the raven brought the food. And then God said, now go to the widow's house. And he stayed there obeying the Lord for all together more than three years. How can I say that Elijah was not created, was not uh, consecrated? Then he brought the message to the nation and said, which one do you want to do? If you are going to follow Baal, follow Baal. If you are going to follow God, follow God. And said, this is the test. Take all your sacrifice, kill it, and put uh, the wood. But don't put fire. The God that brings fire down, that's the God we are going to serve. And the nation said, yes, that's right. And all those Baal prophets, they cried, they prayed, they did everything. There was no fire. And Elijah, real great man of God, made fun of them and said, there you are. Cry aloud. Shake yourself. Wake that idol up. Let him bring fire. And when they couldn't do that at night, he repaired everything. Majestically. Very confident and very bold. After he repaired the altar, he looked up and said, God, I am your servant. Convince these people. And the fire fell. And the whole nation, they said, the Lord is God. And then he said, all these prophets of Baal, deceiving the people, he destroyed them. He wanted to purge the whole nation. He wanted national revival, national righteousness. And Jezebel heard about it. And Jezebel sent information and said, go and tell him. If I am queen, a woman, if I am queen, I don't care what Ahab the king thinks about. I'll deal with you tomorrow. And Elijah, why don't you wait for her? <laughs> and call fire down. Because Elijah could do it. When the captain came with 50 people and said, man of God, they are looking for you. He said, eh, am I a man of God? If I'm a man of God, let fire come down. Destroy you and your 50. Fire came down. But when Elijah heard about Jezebel, he didn't remember the power of God. <laughs> didn't remember it was possible to call fire down. He said, Jezebel, she's looking for me. And she ran. At that time of the unrest in Kaduna State, Maybe you saw a pastor that ran back home. And you are saying, oh, you see now. 
They are not consecrated. Ah, they are consecrated. <laughs> Anybody can be discouraged. Look at Elijah. We're not talking about Judas Iscariot. We're not talking about Gehazi. We're not talking about people that are not committed to God. We're talking about people that were on fire for God. And he ran away. And he sat under a juniper tree. And he said, God, it's enough. It's enough. Then he began to have self-pity. All I have suffered for these people. All I have done for these people. And they're looking for me now to kill me. God, come and kill me yourself. Did he mean it? Ah, if he wanted to die, why didn't he say for Jezebel to do it for him? <laughs> the man didn't want to die. <laughs> Elijah, you want to die? If you want to die, it's very easy. Stay where you are. But he ran. And then he said, God, Jezebel wants to kill me. Come and kill me before she comes. <laughs> when we are discouraged, we talk rubbish. We talk like a child. We talk as if we are not intelligent. Yes, it's not our fault. Discouragement takes away the sense that a man has. It takes away the logic that a man has. That's why he said, God, come and kill me. Did God answer that prayer? In verse 5, as he, as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Look at God. A man that wanted to die. God said, Angel, come. Look. At the time that Elijah was still consecrated, no problem, no discouragement, listen to me. God sent a raven to go and give him food. At the time that he was still remaining with the Lord, completely with the Lord, God said, a widow woman will feed you. At the time he was totally disgusted and said, I want to die. He didn't send a raven. He didn't send a widow woman. Sent an angel to go and feed him. At the time of a discouragement. God takes care of us when we are discouraged. Oh, you think, at the time I'm discouraged? The raven God sent before, God will not even send a raven now. Not even send a widow now. He will send an angel at the time of discouragement. He knows our nature. He knows our infirmity. He stuck up at the end of Mark. Amen. Have you seen it? Amen. Check up at the end of Luke. Amen. Don't close your Bible. My brother open. Have you seen it? At the end of John, check up. Have you seen it? Okay, now it remains one. Check up at the end of Acts of the Apostles. And see if you see that amen again. Do you see it? There is amen for the repetition. Did you learn something this morning? I'm telling you, you need to come in November and hear some other things I will tell you. Amen. Now we can, we can continue now. Thank you very much. We got an amen before the loudspeaker came back. Now, when you are discouraged, don't think that because of the discouragement that God will just abandon you for um, Elijah, he sent an angel. And the angel said, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink 
and he lay him down again. Then in verse 7, the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. The Lord knows. The work is too great for us. The journey is too great for us. And it will supply all we need for the journey in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 9. And he came hither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Discouraged man. What doest thou here? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, I am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountain. Great strong wind rent the mountain. Didn't tear Elijah apart. The wind did not hurt Elijah. Only the mountain. God doesn't hurt us even when we're discouraged. He doesn't destroy us even when we're discouraged. He knows our infirmity. And then we're told, but the Lord was not in the wind. After that, after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so. When Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and, to, and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dwellest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. The same answer again. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Ahazel to be king over Syria. Jehu to be the son of Nimshai, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shepherd of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. In verse 18, yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, every mouth which has not kissed him. Did, did Elijah see any of the seven thousand people? No, he didn't see any of them. I and I alone am the one that remains. But God said, you want to die? I'm not ready to kill you. You don't know the plan that heaven has for you. You don't know the preparations that heaven is making for you. The Lord had just been preparing some angels to prepare some chariots that will take Elijah home. But Elijah did not know. He was not to see death at all. But discouragement wanted him to have a different plan. But God said, I know the plans I have for you. When you are discouraged, the devil will try to say, end it up. Give up the ministry. Give up the preaching. Give up the opportunity. Because you don't know what strategy or plan that God has for you. Just like Elijah did not know. Suppose Elijah had died at that time. Elijah would have missed that. That God had for him. Not only that, he had not even known Elisha that will take over his ministry. Look at the double portion that came on Elisha. Suppose Elijah had died at that time. How would Elisha have been raised up? Whenever you are discouraged, think of the plan of God that is still a mystery to you that you don't know anything about. Think of the people that are still to arise through your ministry that are to do spectacular things for the Lord and all that discouragement will go away. Now, let me show you just four things or five that will help you at a time that discouragement may come. 
Number one, though all people forsake you, the God of heaven says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That God is the shepherd of Israel. The ever-present help in the time of need he is always with you. And whenever you think of needs that discourage you, always understand God is with me. He has not left me. He will never leave me. Number two, Christ will never leave you. He has promised us, the first reference is in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Now in, num in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus is with you. He is a shepherd, he is a savior, he is the captain of our salvation. He will never leave you. Number one, God is with you. He will protect you. He will guide you. And he will make the work to prosper in your hand. Therefore, don't be discouraged. Two, Christ himself is still with you. Now three. In John chapter 14, verse 16. He says, Christ says, I will pray the Father. And he will send the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the helper unto you. So that he will abide with you forever. And since the time that you have given your life to the Lord, since the time that the Spirit of God bore witness with your heart that you are a child of God, from that time till you see Jesus face to face, he will, not, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, the promises will never fail. And if there is any need, just go to God in prayer. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there among you? If his child will ask him bread, will he give him a stone? If his child will ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If we then, being evil, know how to give good things to our own children, how much more will our Father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, at the time of discouragement, remember that your prayer will be answered. You know, your mind may tell you, you are discouraged, don't pray. Because if you pray, God will not answer. That's a lie. I've seen discouraged people pray in the Bible and their prayers were answered. Abraham said, Lord, let's forget about the promise of Isaac. Let Ishmael live. I've waited for so long, let's forget it. Any other thing you want to do for me, do for me. God said, I'll still give you Isaac. Moses said, Lord, kill me. I don't want to continue. God said, I know what you need. Select 70 men. Out of the spirit on you, I'll put the spirit on them. The work, you will still continue. Elijah said, it's enough. I'm not better than any of my fathers. This is the time to kill me. And... Um, God said, no, you are not ready to die yet. Your chariot is about ready. That will take you to heaven. Anna, when Penina, the second wife of the man, when that, when that woman tormented her very much, she got so much discouraged that she said, I will not even eat. And was just crying and crying and crying until Eli said, ah, Drunken woman, what's the matter with you? said, I'm not drunk. Out of the bitterness of my heart, I'm talking. Your prayer is answered. That's how Samuel came. Rachel was so discouraged and went to uh, the husband, Jacob, and said, Give me children or I die. 
And Jacob said, am I God who has restrained you from bearing? It was discouragement. But do you know after that, that woman had children. God answers the prayers of those who are discouraged. And I've shown you all through the Bible. And in the New Testament, while Peter was just about to pack up, had not caught anything from last night, toiled all the night, and was packing up. And uh, Jesus said, can I use your boat? Oh yes, you can use it. When I was using it, what good did it do me? Take it away and be using it. I'm packing my net already. And then after Jesus used the boat, he said, uh, Peter, throw your net to that side. said, Jesus, already I've told all night I caught nothing. In any case, at thy word, even though I'm discouraged, let me try. And he caught more than he ever caught in all his fishing business. God answers the prayer of discouraged people. The next time you are discouraged and the devil says, don't pray because you are discouraged, tell him, I will pray because I'm about to get a miracle to remove the discouragement. He will answer your prayer. And so, God is with you. Christ is with you. The Spirit of God is with you. And also, it says, the promises of God, they are with you. They will never fail. And in Psalm 34, verse 7, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. At the time of the discouragement of Elijah, God sent an angel. Those angels have not died yet. They're still ministering to the heirs of salvation. They're still ministering to people that may be getting discouraged. And next time you get discouraged, understand that God will never leave you. And we're going to succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not going to yield to discouragement. The work he has given us to do, we shall do it until everything is finished and finalized. And we can say like Paul the Apostle in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I pray that every one of us will continue until the work God has given us to do, until we finish everything in Jesus' name. And then we can say, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love is appearing. Let's continue the work. The Lord will give us the victory. Let's rise up and pray. If you have been getting discouraged, tell the Lord there's no more room for discouragement. God is with you. Christ is with you. The Spirit of God is with you. Never give up. The promises of God are yours. Never give up. The angels of God are around those that fear the Lord. Never give up. Whatever the opposition, never give up. Keep on marching on. Our Father, we thank you again. As your word comes to us, lifting us up so that we will see things in the scriptures as examples that we will learn from so that we will have rest in you. Father, we thank you for the message that has just come to us. We know that you've called us into the gospel and you have committed the preaching of the gospel into our hands. Lord, 
We are grateful to you that today you are opening our eyes to things and people who have gone before us in this world. Father, you are reminding us that discouragement will come our way as we keep on following you, doing the work in partnership with you. But we are grateful to you that you are reminding us that you have a plan for us. Lord, we ask that when discouragement comes to us because of our past failures, we pray that you will open our understanding and uh, bring to our memories of your promises and your plan for us so that these discouragements will vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, when financial problems bring discouragement to us, when family problems bring discouragement for us, but to us, and when our congregations are sources of discouragement to us, Father, we are asking that by your power, by your grace, you will remind us, you will bring to our remembrance, because we know that the work of the devil is to make us forget those things which will help us, and to make us remember those things which will discourage us. Father, we are praying that your spirit will bring to our remembrance those things you have written concerning us, that your thoughts for us are for good and not of evil. You want to bring us to an expected end. Lord, bring these promises to our memories as discouragement, discouragement comes our ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are grateful to you. Yes. We just thank you indeed. Yes. Lord, when our environment and circumstances and problems brought by man or by the devil come our way, Father, we are asking that you will remind us that the, you are the God of all supplies, the God that stood with Paul, you are the God that stood with Joshua, and that as you bring these things to our remembrance, Father, grant us grace to continue in this work and prosper us in it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we know that the greatest thing that can happen to us as pastors is discouragement. It is not the persecution by itself. It is not the problems by themselves that will make us fall down. But discouragement, as we have heard, is your greatest weapon. Lord, we pray that you will help us as individuals in our own stations. When these discouragements come, remind us of your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, remind us that as you stood with Joshua, as you stood with Moses, and as people were discouraged, we are mightily used of you to accomplish great things for you. Lord, we pray that in our own circumstances, you will remind us so that our lives will be channels of blessings to others in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we sincerely pray that discouragement will not hinder you from using us to fulfill your purpose for our lives in this generation in Jesus name. Amen. Father we are asking that discouragement will not make us run away from our post but as faithful and honest soldiers as obedient soldiers we will keep our post what come what may because we know that Jesus is there with us. Father, help us in such a way that the work you have committed into, our, into us in the territories we now occupy will be fulfilled according to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go, go with us. Amen. Father, we ask that all that we have gained from this conference will not put it aside. We know that the devil is there to plan, but we are grateful to you, Father. Jesus is by us. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Lord, we are asking that we will be wise and will not fall a victim to the devil, but that through your wisdom and through your mighty power and your spirit, 
You will help us to grow from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we are asking that all that you have taught us, all that you have shared with us, with determination, with earnestness, with wisdom, we are asking that you will help us to apply these things to our working situations in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for hearing us. As we go out from here, go with us. Let your protection be over us. And Lord, we pray that the desired increase in our churches, the de desired growth in our churches, and the way we have promised you that we will love other pastors and we, that we will be channels of blessings to other pastors, Lord, we pray that we will not fail you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are promised that we will pray for the coming conference in November. We are asking that you pour upon us the spirit of prayer and supplication, even for those who are not here with us, so that when next we meet, more and more of our people will be partakers of these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are asking that even the venue for the next conference, you yourself will make it available. And that by your grace, we will be doing publicity for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Father, we just honor you and give you all the glory. Thank you because of your presence throughout this meeting. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them.